You're watching the Nokia X20 disassembly. If you need any tools, there are links in the description. We need to start off by removing the SIM tray. Once the SIM tray is removed, we need to use a hairdryer or a heat gun to apply heat to the back plate so we can loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a look at the plastic back plate. There are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once the screws are removed, we're going to remove the camera lens cover. If you happen to ever break the camera lens cover, the glass portion over here can be removed by applying heat and gently prying it off. Once that camera lens cover is removed, we can see another Phillips screw located over here in the center of the cameras, which needs to be removed. Now the top plastic cover can be lifted up and removed. On the top plastic cover, we can see some antenna lines, which are these light gray color lines. And the NFC antenna is located right over here. Here's a look at the other side. Now that we have access to the battery cable, we're going to start off by disconnecting that first. And then we can go ahead and disconnect the rest of the cables. There are three wire cables or coaxial cables over here in the corner which need to be popped off and disconnected. Now we can disconnect the front facing camera. Now we can lift up and remove the main board. As far as the camera connectors go, they can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's also some copper tape over here on top of this shield and graphite pads on this shield and this shield. Also the LED flash is located right over here and there's a secondary microphone over here on top. When we peel back the graphite pad, there isn't really anything revealed underneath. But once we peel back the copper tape, you can see a thermal pad which is on this ship over here and another thermal pad which sits on this ship over here. And we can see an empty slot over here with solder points for a chip. So I'm assuming that would be for a different model phone. On the back side, we can see the proximity sensor located over here on top and the two other camera connectors over here, which can be disconnected by just popping them off. We can also see some copper tape over here and over here and thermal paste on top of this copper tape and more thermal paste on top of the shield over here. Once the removable shield is removed over here, we can see thermal paste on top of the processor, RAM, and these two chips over here. There's also a thermal pad over here underneath this copper tape. Now we can lift up and remove the bottom speaker assembly. Here's a look at the speaker assembly. There's a mesh filter over here over the opening of the speaker assembly. There are two coaxial cables on the subboard which need to be popped off. One is located here and one over here. The flex cable over here also needs to be disconnected. Now we can lift up and remove the subboard. On the subboard, the charger port is located right over here and there's a rubber gasket around it. The headphone jack is located over here, which also has a rubber gasket, and the main microphone is located over here. And here's a look at the other side. When it comes to removing the battery, there are no provided pull tabs to help you pry it off, so you're either going to have to apply some heat on the front side of the phone where the screen is, so you can loosen up the adhesive underneath the battery, or you're going to have to use isopropyl alcohol and apply something on the sides of the battery and let it sit for about a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the battery. Once the battery is removed, we can see this flex cable over here, which connects the main board to the subboard. We can also see the flex cable over here for the screen, which is routed through this opening in the mid frame. So if you needed to replace the screen, you need to take the back cover off, remove the screws and remove the top cover, disconnect the battery cable and the screen cable, and then you'd have to remove the battery so you gain access to the flex cable for the screen over here. At that point, you heat up the front of the phone where the screen is, so you can loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then you'd pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply your new screen, making sure you run your cable back through the opening over here in the mid frame, and then reassemble your phone. Once the graphene film over here is peeled back, it reveals a copper heat pipe underneath, which runs along underneath over here, where the backside of the motherboard is seated. So moving on, the vibrator motor is located over here in the corner, and it's held down with some adhesive, and there's an antenna board over here, which has the gray coaxial cable attached underneath, 
which runs along over here and from the side of the phone and connects to the main board. The flex cable for the fingerprint reader is located right here. And the flex cable over here is for the volume keys and the power button key. So if you need to remove the fingerprint reader or gain access to the flex cable over here for the volume keys and power button, you would need to remove those two Phillips screws over here and remove this metal bracket in order to gain access to that. The earpiece speaker is located over here on top and it's held down with adhesive. And the flex cable for this button over here on this side is located over here. As far as repairability goes, I'll give this phone a 6 out of 10. There's some strong adhesive on the back plate making it difficult to pry that off and there are a number of steps you need to take in order to replace the screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the phone back together. Once all the screws are back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.